Welcome back everybody. Today I want to take a deeper dive into deep dungeons. I want to see what special rewards are waiting for us, what challenges await us, and tips to help make this farm a success. I'll show you everything you'll need to know and what treasures may be waiting for you. We might even find a new haircut. So come along as we explore the wonders of the Heaven on High Deep Dungeon. The first thing I needed to do to access Heaven on High is I needed to reach and complete Floor 50 of Palace of the Dead. My strength and armor buff were roughly level 20. For me to feel comfortable soloing the 50 floors, I would need to farm silver chests for more permanent buffs, so I decided to go the more traditional route of joining a random party to clear each set of 10 floors. Though with a little more time, I could have easily cleared these floors solo. If you just want to unlock the other deep dungeons, I recommend just queuing for random parties or starting a party in Party Finder. The queues can be long, but if you take your time and level as much as you can on each floor, you should have no problem clearing the 50 floors. To access Heaven on High, you must also complete the MSQ quest Tide Goes In, Imperial Goes Out in the Stormblood storyline and have a level 61 job. Once you reach these prerequisites, you can now accept the blue quest to unlock Heaven on High. To do that, we need to head over to the Ruby Sea and talk to Hamakaze. They will give us the quest Knocking on Heaven's Door, which unlocks the first 30 floors of Heaven on High. Every job is able to solo Heaven on High, but I kept reading that Dark Knight is the easiest job. Sadly, my Dark Knight is only level 30. Since you need a job that's at least level 61, the only job I had available to me, besides Blue Mage, is Warrior. So I decided to try it on Warrior. Heaven on High has a similar weapon and armor system as Palace of the Dead. Once again, it starts at level 1. So all progress made in the palace doesn't port over to Heaven on High. Your gear stats are measured off with your ether, pool, arms, and armor, which you can find in silver chests. These buffs are a permanent buff added to your stats if you are able to finish the current 10 floors. You may also consider bringing food for your run. The only stat that food can increase is vitality, aka HP. So find some cheap food with high vitality. Don't be like me and use baked eggplants. It's way too expensive and there's much cheaper food with the same amount or even more vitality. You'll also want to bring some healing pots. Healing pots are normally garbage, but in a deep dungeon, they can be the difference between a failed run and a successful one. If you are a caster, consider picking up some echo drops from the major city to remove silence. Just like the Palace of the Dead Farm, we will be farming up silver haloed sacks, which can be found in banded coffers. Banded coffers are rare treasure chests that are normally hidden, but can be found with a palm ender of intuition. Once you find a pomander or intuition, you want to pop one and ideally always have the buff up. The buff will persist between floors until you find a banded coffer. Don't use a new intuition until you have collected the banded coffer. I tend to get two to three sacks per run. Ways I increase my odds of finding pomanders of intuition? I pop a pomander of affluence whenever I can to increase the number of treasure chests available on the following floor. I like to start a floor with a Palmander of Fortune. This will give a much higher chance that monsters will drop a chest. Some of the new Palmanders added to Heaven on High that can be useful for solo runs are Palmander of Raising, which immediately raises a dead party member once KO'd. This will save a solo run, so try to keep this buff up whenever you can. Palmander of Petrification, which turns all mobs into stone for 30 seconds, causing them to be one-shot. Pop this and zerk through as much as you can. Then go back to loot those chests uh, after the 30 seconds are up. Palmander of Frailty, which increases the damage enemies take and decreases the damage they deal on the current floor for 3 minutes. These are best saved for bosses. They've also added Magicites to Silver Treasure Coffers. These are very rare for the first 10 floors. They will summon either Ifrit, Titan, or Garuda and kill all the mobs on the current floor and give the party temporary invincibility. On a boss floor, they will also do 20% damage to the boss. If I'm fortunate to find one, I like to save them for the final floors and just clear my way to the final boss. The floor 10 boss is very simple and it just saves a lot more time clearing the previous floors and doing 20% damage to them. While clearing the floors, try to pull mobs into the hallways and fight them there. This will help avoid traps. Also, traps tend to spawn towards the center of the room, so try to hug the walls when traversing through the floors. Accursed horde markers tend to be placed right next to traps, so it's advisable to clear the room before grabbing the hidden chest. For floors 1 through 10, the primary mob to look out for is the Heavenly Shark. They roam from room to room. They have a nasty attack called Jaws. It's a castable attack that is a powerful tank buster. This can end your run before it even begins. Always kill or stun as fast as possible. The level 10 boss is called Mojaboon. 
Moshaboon is a fairly simple boss. The main mechanic to watch out for is they will cast Overtow, knocking everyone against the wall, and follow up with Hydro Ball that is a massive AoE hitting half the room. You have just enough time to reach safety before the AoE goes off. Anti knockback appeared to not work for me. Moshaboon also has a circle attack that does minimal damage, so if you can avoid these attacks, You'll have no issue defeating him. Just like Palace of the Dead, I like to do about 10 runs in a session. It takes me about 4 to 5 hours to do that at about 30 minutes per run. It says you can easily speed this up with some f f f friends? I don't know. That's what the internet tells me. If you want to know what that means, hopefully you can take advantage of it. Now it's time to collect our loot. Oh yeah. Some of the loot from Palace of the Dead is transferred over, including the Thamnarian and Falconer glances. The female Thamnarian set goes for over 100,000 per piece. The new goodies we're focusing on are a vast amount of chocobo bardings that are ranging between 20 to 100,000 gil each. But the main item we're looking for is the ever coveted Gear Abanian Plate Hairstyle, which at the time of recording this is going for 900,000 gil, but I've recently seen it as high as 1.5 million gil. This is a very sought after hairstyle. It's the hairstyle my main uses. And as of doing this run, I now have it for this character as well. <laughs> Not to mention that every run will award a small amount of each of the current tombstones and that this is a nice option for leveling alts. I tend to enjoy this type of farm because it takes two of my favorite activities and combines them, puzzle solving and gamba. Nothing beats the power of not knowing what treasures your silver halo sacks will hold. Usually it'll be trash, but every now and then you'll strike gold and reinvigorate you to go back for more. I hope you enjoyed this little look into an easy heaven on high farm. Be sure to leave any comments with helpful tips or suggestions. Consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.